Hello students, this is lesson U6A04. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can solve for inscribed angles formed by chords. So let's take a look at some of the concepts that you will need in order to be successful at some of the exercises that accompany this lesson. So again, this same diagram has uh, repeated itself in uh, several uh, has found its way into several different lessons, okay, and that is what, it, what defines a chord. We are going to be continuing investigating some of the things that, um, that come out of chords intersecting or um, uh, inside of the circle as well as outside of the circle in the next couple of lessons. So let's take a look at this next diagram over here, which is... Uh, I'm introducing a new term here, which is the word tangent. So a line that touches a circle at one point only is referred to as a tangent. So this line on the outside, when you use a highlighter, so this line on the outside is actually referred to as a tangent line, this, because this line touches the circle at one point only. A line that looks like this Okay, even though the segment here is touching the circle, that is not a line tangent to the circle because a line segment, okay, is a part of a line. A line extends forever, if you recall, right? So this line segment actually uh, is a part of a line that intersects the circle at two different points. So that is not a tangent. So one more time, a line that is tangent to the circle is a line that touches the circle at one point only. There's a really uh, important uh, property that, uh, that connects directly to this, and this is super important for problem solving involving circle geometry. And that is a tangent line touches the circle once, but also it forms a right angle here with the diameter or the radius. Either, way, either, either one's the same, right? The diameter and the radius. The radius is part of the diameter, so therefore, they, they, uh, we're talking about the same things. So it, the tangent line will form a right angle with the diameter or the radius. Okay, so now that we know the relationship between the central angles and arcs, uh, what about angles formed between chords and tangents um, and so forth, right? So what we're going to talk about now is this idea of an inscribed angle, okay? So an inscribed angle is an angle that is on the circle. So and they're and they're typically formed by chords. So let's take a look. Chords and tangents. So as it turns out, these are the relationships here. Now I encourage you to just take a moment to observe closely here, even though we have four different diagrams but they're all really talking about the same things. Let's try to let's just try to talk through this a little bit. Here I'm telling you the inscribed angle over here is actually going to be half of the intercepted arc. And notice that the uh, that the inscribed angle that's over here is formed by a diameter and another chord. Let's take a look at case number two. So I have here a chord and another chord. Now, neither one of these chords are diameters, yet the same relationship holds. The inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. Let's take a look at the third case. And again, this time the two chords are on either side of the, uh, of the central angle, uh, of the center of the circle, but yet the same relationship holds where we have the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So why am I telling you that there are these three different cases? Because these are three different combination of outcomes that can come about if you were to form an inscribed angle using chords. But understand that it's the same relationship, that the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. That's all it is. We can also have an inscribed angle formed by a tangent line and a chord. And as it turns out, it's the same relationship. The inscribed angle over here is half of the intercepted arc. So A is once again equal to half of B. So it's the same formula for all four cases. 
So one formula for all four cases. Let's take a look at another scenario. Okay. So these are more, um, more theorems. They can be proven, okay? But let's take a look. This should make sense, right? So right now I have A is an inscribed angle, okay? And it intercepts this arc right here. And I also have in another inscribed angle, B, which also intercepts the same arc. So because they intercept the same arc, therefore, both of these angles, both of these inscribed angles must be the same. So what does that mean? Well, inscribed angles of the same or congruent arcs will be congruent. This is a theorem. And this should make logical sense. I do not encourage you to memorize this, yet try to understand this so that when, when this comes up, you will know how to react and be able to apply this. Let's take a look at the next concept here. So I have a diameter here, okay? And then in, um, on one side of the semicircle, we draw two chords. As it turns out, the inscribed angle will always equal to 90. And that should make sense because if we apply the concept of inscribed angles, a half a circle has a measure of 180 degrees. Regardless of where we draw the two chords on one side of the semicircle, this will always end up being 90 degrees as a result. So a, a very definitive statement can be made. We can, any inscribed triangle in a semicircle will always end up being a right triangle. Or to put it succinctly, angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. Let's take a look at the next concept. This can be sh proven uh, with a little bit of algebra. I encourage you at the end of this lesson, if you look at the, um, if you check out the, the, the physical slides, um, at the end of this lesson, I do go through a proof on why any of these things work or why any of the um, previous um, theorem in the other slide also works. But as it turns out here, I have a quadrilateral that's inscribed inside of a circle. As it turns out, the opposite angles will always add up to 180. All of the opposite angles will always add up to 180. Not the adjacent, but the opposite angles. And then last but not least, okay, we, if we have two chords that are parallel, they will intercept congruent arcs. Now, why is that the case? This can be shown in like 30 seconds flat. Watch this. Because I have two parallel lines, if I draw a line connecting those two chords, isn't that a transversal? And what do we know about these angles here? They're called alternate interior angles. If alternate interior angles are congruent and they intercept these arcs here, therefore, these arcs must also be congruent. Okay, so these are the concepts, concepts that we will be using. So here it is once again. And here, what, here are these concepts again. So if you put it all together, we're going to now apply it into one big problem. Okay, so let's take a look. Pause the video here to see if you can apply this. Don't be intimidated by the drawing because I promise you this is all... Um, it's all simple, simple mathematics. There's very little... There's, the, the computation is ne next to nothing, okay? So let's take a look at uh, question one, angle BAC. I have angle BAC, that's what I'm trying to find. I also noticed that uh, the arcs here are given by these proportions, angle uh, arc AB, arc BC, arc CD, and arc AC are, are proportioned one, two, three, and four. With this fact, okay, I noticed that A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, and uh, A, C, they all make up the entire length of the circle, right? A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, C. So A, B, B, C, C, D. Sorry, this should say AD, not AC. Okay, is one, two, three, four. 
So if AD here, okay, so all four of these, okay, arcs make up the entire circle. And I notice that this is proportion in this way, one, two, three, four. So therefore, if I multiply this proportion by, let's say, A, right, the letter A, lowercase a. So I'm going to have A plus 2A plus 3A plus 4A should all equal to 360. This will allow me to figure out what A is, what that proportional constant is. So a plus 2a plus 3a plus 4a, that will be 10a, or a is equal to 36. So if a is equal to 36, then I immediately know the following has to be true. Again, this is not ac, it's ad. So ab is going to be 36. bc is going to be 72. cd is going to be 108. And AD is going to be uh, 4 times 36, so that's 144. Okay? So knowing this fact, I can now solve for angle BAC. Angle BAC is going to be half of arc BC. So if angle BAC is going to be ha half of arc BAC... I then know whoops, that it will be 36. Next, I know I want to figure out what is angle ABD. ABD. So if you look at this, I'm going to use a finer Sharpie here, or a highlighter. If you look at trying to figure out what is angle ABD, ABD, angle ABD intercepts this arc right there. So therefore, angle ABD is going to be half of angle AD. Uh, arc AD. So therefore, this is going to equal the 72. All right, moving on. Angle ACB. Angle ACB is going to be half of arc AB. Therefore, it will be 18. Angle CBD. Angle CBD will be half of this arc right here. So therefore, that's 54. Angle ACD, ACD, will be half of this arc right here. So therefore, it's going to be half of AD, which is going to be 72. Next, we have angle BDC. Angle BDC is going to be half of arc BC, which is going to be 36. Next, I need to figure out what is angle BDA, which again is going to be half of AB, which is going to be 18. Next, I need to figure out what is angle CAD, which is going to be half of this arc right here. So I need to figure out, I'm sorry, not uh, uh, CAD, CAD. So I got the wrong arc here. So angle CAD is going to be half of this guy. So it's half of arc CD. So therefore, it will equal to 54. Next, I need to figure out what is angle DAB. DAB. So that's this entire thing right there. So that's going to be half of arc AB. DAB. DAB. So... I got that wrong. It's not half of arc AB. It's actually going to be DAB. So it's actually going to be half of that, which is going to be 90. So this is incorrect. This should be 90 here. This should say 90. Okay. And then uh, angle uh, RAD. RAD is this guy right there. It's going to be half of arc AD. So it will be half of arc AD. So half of arc AD is going to be 72. Uh, PCB, PCB is this guy right here. So it's going to be half of arc BC. So therefore, that is going to be 36. Angle QCD, QCD 
is this guy right there. So it's going to be half of CD. So it's going to be 54. Uh, angle ADR. Angle ADR is this guy right here. So therefore, I need to uh, find half of arc AD, right? So it's going to be half of AD. And half of AD is going to be 72 again. And then angle BDA. Angle BDA is this angle over here. Angle BDA is going to again be half of angle half of arc BA. And that is going to be 18. Angle BAR. Angle BAR is going to be half of all of this. Right? Or what you can also do is we can figure out what is the other angle on the other into the other direction, right? In this direction. So AB is 36. So that means half of that is going to be 18. So that means this angle over here. Whoops. So that means this angle over here is going to be 18. And since this angle is what I'm trying to look for. This is going to be 180 minus 18, which is, which is 162. And then I got to figure out what is angle P. Angle P is the angle on the outside over here. So wait a minute. Uh, if I know what is angle, so if I'm trying to figure out angle P and I know this angle over here was 72 and this is 72 and this guy over here is, well, uh, is going to be 36, right? Because it's 180. And um, did I figure out before what angle CDQ was? Uh, let's see here. This angle over here is 54, and this is also 54. So that means this guy right here is going to be 72. So if I know this is 72 and this is 36, I can then figure out what this angle over here is. 72 plus 36, that is 108. So that means this angle over here must also be 72. So this is going to be 72. Angle Q was also 72, and angle R is 36. Okay, we're almost done here. Uh, we have these two angles, or well, actually, pause the video to see if you can figure this out. We have these two angles are going to be the same, or not same, but they are going to be supplementary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add these two and set it equal to 180. And these two angles are also going to be supplementary. Perform the substitution. Combine like terms. I'll end up with 9x plus 5y is equal to 178. And 4y plus 24. I'm sorry. Combining like terms, I'll end up with 9x plus 5y is equal to 178. And combining like terms again, I'll end up with 9x plus 4y is equal to 164. So these two equations here, okay, I, what I end up with is, is a system of equations. So after I have these equations set up, okay, then what, I, what will happen here is, okay, I can solve for them. Okay, I can uh, solve for one variable by eliminating another. If you recall that technique from Algebra 1, I have 9x plus 5y is equal to 178. 9x plus 4y is equal to 164. I'm going to take those equations, and I will subtract them from one another. What I will end up with is, I will end up with y is equal to 14. How do I do that? One more time. I took this equation... 
subtract it from this guy. Subtract it by that guy. So 178 minus 164 is 14. 5y minus 4y is y. 9x minus 9x is 0. I end up with y is equal to 14. If y is equal to 14, I can then take that and substitute it back into either this equation or this equation. It doesn't matter. And I solve for what x is. And subtract 70 from both sides. I get 9x is equal to 108. Divide by 9, I get, 100, I get 12. So therefore, to find out what is L, M, N, and R, I substitute what X is and Y is back in. I get angle L is equal to 66. Angle M is equal to 100. Angle N is equal to 114. And angle R is equal to 80.